Hey, thank you so much for joining me in the inside of my car. I'd love to talk to you today about the grand unified theory. In doing so, however, I will have to talk about the standard model, the theory of everything, and super string theory. I know it's dense, but I promise we'll get through it. Just bear with me. There are four forces in operation in the universe. The first two are nuclear forces, the weak force and the strong force. The third is electromagnetic, and the fourth is gravity. In the beginning of time, 14 billion years ago, when the universe was hot, there was something in operation called the electroweak force. The electroweak force is the combination of the weak force and the electromagnetic force. When the universe started to expand and cool, those forces actually split from the electroweak force. How did it split? Why did it split? <laughs> Let's talk about the standard model. The standard model does really well to describe how fundamental particles interact with one another. Okay, so there's matter. Under the subcategory of matter, there's fermions, and under the subcategory of fermions, quarks and leptons, okay? So quarks and leptons, as we recently discovered, come to a distance of 1 times 10 to the negative 31st meter. And when they do, they come really close. They're close enough, the energy is high enough, that they interconvert. You heard me right. The quark actually operates under the strong force the lepton operates under the weak force. How is it that these forces interchange? That led to the grand unified theory. The grand unified theory, while it does combine the weak force, strong force, and electromagnetic force, it sadly omits the force of gravity because the mathematics just fall apart in that kind of structure. So physicists, particle physicists, astrophysicists set out, like Mikio Kaku, uh, uh, Klein, Reinemann, Kaluza, Gelman, they came together to try to understand why these forces operate so differently and how to unify them, because there has to be an answer, right? Okay. So, the greater the distance is, 1 times 10 to the negative 31st meter, the greater the distance is, you will find that these forces actually do split. But that's due to expansion. However, when it's hot enough, the, uni the, the unification of both of these particles actually takes place. So that leads us to something greater. How do these forces unify? So let's talk back about the quark and the lepton. The quark is actually a fermion as is the lepton, it's a fermion that operates under the Pauli exclusion principle. The Pauli exclusion principle states that there are four quantum numbers. I believe it's the mass, the charge, the angular momentum, and spin of these particles that dictate that no more than two, two or more fermions cannot exist in that same orbital. They are all different. No two snowflakes are alike. So because they are different, they're so different, how do these particles exchange? How do they become one another? There's something else that I want to talk about. A fermion is just a subcategory of something that the standard model describes. Something else, another particle called a boson. The boson, the gauge bosons, actually dictate all of the forces, like the electromagnetic magnetic weak force and the strong force and the gravity. They describe how these forces work. So the boson and the quark can actually also co-convert. How does that happen? Again, they come to this distance, it's hot enough, and they split. This splitting led to the validation of the grand unified theory, but none of this includes gravity. Gravity is something that is has been tried to explain Isaac Newton when he was just 22 invented calculus at the rate that people learn calculus to try to describe the, the the structure of a comet and its orbit and its gravity or the moon how it goes around the earth all of this gravity Einstein tried to come up with uh, explanations of the gravity and has succeeded. Actually, he did really well because not only did general relativity explain gravity, it also, in his mathematics, he discovered that the electromagnetic force is something that interchanges as well. So let's get, to, get into string theory. String theory, like I mentioned earlier, describes how inside of the quark, it was said to believe 
theory is something that can only exist if we talk about the dimensions in this universe. We know that the three dimensions, 3D, the three dimensions of this universe are up, down, back, forth, left, and right. And the fourth dimension, like Einstein talked about space-time, the fourth dimension is time, but string theory operates under 10 different dimensions, 11th being time. All of these dimensions come together to explain how there are uh, the force of, of electromagnetic or the force of a weak and strong uh, interchange. So these dimensions are kind of hard to understand, but it's like as though there is a grid that we understand. It's up, down, back, forth, left and right, three dimensions that operate in this universe. The other seven dimensions are believed to be coiled up in that grid and spread, dispersed in the universe evenly. They're so small that it's hard for us to ever detect, but it exists. And this can go into dark energy and explain why there's a repulsive force that causes the universe to expand at an accelerating speed. I want to talk to you also about the Higgs boson. Remember there's something called the fermion. Remember there are quarks and leptons under the subcategory of fermions. Separate from that, there's something called a boson. Bosons explain how these uh, electromagnetic weak and strong and gravity forces operate. So there is the boson that is uh, controversial, but the Higgs boson was a particle that was recently empirically proven because of the Hadron Collider in 2012. I believe it was in Switzerland, CERN, when they brought both when they brought energy close enough to uh, collide because this doesn't happen collide it's like a ship in the ocean colliding with another ship it doesn't happen but they collided and they produced so many new particles that they could detect not see remember because seeing is is truly believing seeing is like a photo a quanta energy photo Photons interacting with those particles. When photons interact with those particles, it changes that particle. So if something is changing, we can't detect it for what it is because it's five steps ahead of us. So the Higgs boson was proven and detected with this Hadron Collider, and we were able to understand that because the Higgs boson is operating under a different dimension, a different field, this is where Higgs field comes into play. The Higgs field is something that gives particles mass. Remember that the photon is massless. However, the electron, the proton, these particles, the W and Z bosons, these particles do have mass. Remember I was talking about the electroweak force. The electroweak force is the mixture of a photon, W and Z boson. But however, when the universe starts to expand and cool, the electroweak force split. That was spontaneous symmetry breaking. The electromagnetic and and uh, weak force split. And so the photon went on its own. It had no mass. The W and Z boson had a little bit of mass, but because they began to interact with the Higgs field, it gave them more mass, 80 times more mass than the proton, and thus it split. So gravity still is such a conundrum. It doesn't really describe how all of it comes together, but experimentally we have discovered that there are atoms, particles that exist under different forces like electromagnetic, weak and strong, that interconvert. And so we see that there is possibility for the unification of all four of these forces. Superstring theory hasn't been proven yet, but the, the math behind it is so beautiful and exists under 10 dimensions plus 1, 11 time. It exists under those dimensions. If you go into 12 dimensions, 13 dimensions, Mikio Kaku did the math himself to try to understand if these uh, dimensions can exist, but these particles become unstable in these dimensions, so they don't exist. It seems to be 10. I cannot explain to you why, because I don't know the math, but it seems to be 10 dimensions as to why um, this hyperspace concept exists. String theory does make sense in this situation. The grand unified theory is the unifications of those initial three forces and gravity comes into play with the theory of super string theory. We're still trying to understand. We have amazing people <laughs> trying to figure out how all of this comes together. Um, 
that is essentially it. Uh, I would love to talk about so much more, but um, making a video on the sitting inside of your car, it's, um, uh, it's exhilarating, but it's also confusing. I hope that you kept up. Um, <laughs> see you later and uh, look forward to more of this information in my PowerPoint. Thank you so much. Bye, Dr. Dunn.